All right, let's talk about something that's probably a huge headache for a lot of you, financial reports. I'm talking about the ones you have to do over and over again every single month. We're gonna break down a killer four-step method to automate the whole thing right inside Excel. Seriously, it's time to ditch that manual grind for good. Okay, be honest, does this look familiar? That frantic end of the month scramble, you know, the pressure's on, that deadline is just breathing down your neck and you are absolutely drowning in spreadsheets. It's a classic story for so many people in finance, but listen, it really doesn't have to be your story anymore. I mean, let's just call it what it is, right? The pain is so real. You've got that endless copy pasting from who knows how many different files, then there's the nightmare of chasing down VLOOKUP errors or some other broken formula. And don't even get me started on the hours, hours you waste just manually formatting these things. All while you've got that little voice in the back of your head just constantly worried that one tiny last minute change is gonna blow the whole thing up. It's, it's just exhausting. But what if I told you there is a much better way? A truly modern, automated approach that lives right inside the Excel you're already using every single day. No fancy new software needed. So what is this magic? Well, it's a framework, a really clear four-step system for automating everything. Okay, here's the game plan. Step one, we've got to shape our data so the machine can actually work with it. We'll get into what that means. Step two is building a logical data model what's called a star schema. Think of it as the skeleton. Step three, we program the calculation brain using something called DAX measures. And finally, step four, we connect all that power back to our friendly Excel spreadsheet using cube functions. Let's dig into each one. All right, first up, we're tackling steps one and two together because they're really two sides of the same coin. This is all about building the data engine. You gotta get this part right because it's the foundation for literally everything else. Now this slide shows maybe the single most important idea you need to grasp. On the left, that's the wide format. It's what we humans are used to, right? January, February, March, all laid out in columns. Looks clean, but for a computer, it's rigid, it's a pain to analyze. The machine loves the long format on the right. See how every single transaction is its own row. You've got a column for the account, one for the date, one for the amount. This is way, way more flexible and powerful. So you're probably asking, okay, how do I get from that wide format to the long one? Well, the magic trick is a little something called unpivot. It's a feature inside Power Query, and it is a total game changer. You basically just tell it to take all those month columns and poof, it turns them into nice, neat rows, perfectly prepped for our data model. Okay, so once your data is in that nice, long format, we need to organize it. And we do that using what's called a star schema. It sounds complicated, but the idea is actually super simple. You have a big table in the middle with all your numbers, your trial balance. That's your fact table. Then, connected to it, you have smaller tables that describe the who, what, where, when. These are your dimension tables, like your chart of accounts or a calendar table. They give the numbers context. And here's how it all clicks together. The dimensions filter the facts. It's that simple. Your chart of accounts and your calendar tables, those dimensions, are what let you slice and dice your trial balance data. So if you want to see, say, just revenue for December, those two tables work together to filter that big fact table and pull out exactly the number you need. This relationship is what makes the whole report dynamic. Okay, our data engine is built. It's solid. Now it's time for step three, giving this thing a brain. We're going to add the calculation logic. This quote here really gets to the heart of the matter. It's a whole new way of thinking. Instead of putting a formula in cell F5 that adds up some other cells, we're going to explicitly write out our calculations as reusable formulas. We call them measures, and they live inside the data model, not on the worksheet. And this table just lays it all out. You know, in traditional Excel, you're always thinking about cells. Your formula is equal sum C2 to C100. It's locked to that specific range. But with a DAX measure, you stop thinking about cells and start thinking about whole columns you write some TB amount. And the amazing part is that one measure is smart. It knows what filters you've applied, like the month or the account, and it just gives you the right answer every time. It's dynamic, it's reusable, it's just better. So when you're building financial reports, you're really just gonna need a few key types of these DAX calculations. You've got your basic stuff, you know, simple sums. Then you get into the really cool time intelligence functions, which makes getting month to date or year to date totals ridiculously easy. And then there's the big one, the calculate function. 
This thing is like a superpower. It lets you change the rules and manipulate the filters to answer really complex business questions. Okay, let's recap. We've built our data engine. We've programmed the calculation brain. Now for the grand finale. Step four, we're going to connect all this incredible power back to the place we all know and love, the good old Excel grid. And the way we do this is with two key functions, cube member and cube value. The easiest way to think about it is this. Cube member is the label. It's the function you use to pull in the text for your rows and columns, like revenue or December 2024. Cube value, on the other hand, is the number. It goes into the data model, grabs the result of one of your DAX measures, and filters it using the labels you set up. Label and number. That's it. So building one of these cube value formulas is actually really straightforward. First, you just tell it what data model to connect to and which measure you want to grab, like your total trial balance measure. Then you just start adding the coordinates. You point it to the cell that has your row label, that's your cube member for the account, and then you point it to the cell with your date label. That's it. The formula does the rest, reaching into the model and pulling back the perfectly filtered number. So you've gone through all four steps. You've built the engine, the brain, and connected it to your spreadsheet. What's the payoff? What's the big so what? Let's talk about what your life looks like now. This is your new reality, a one-click refresh. Seriously, the new month's data comes in, you hit refresh all, and your reports are just done. You get guaranteed accuracy because all your math is in one central place, not scattered across a million different cell formulas just waiting to break. You can now analyze your data dynamically, switching between months or between MTD, QTD, YTD with a simple dropdown. But the biggest win? You get to shift your focus from the soul-crushing data prep to actually analyzing the data and finding insights. That's where the real value is. And of course, this. For anyone who's ever built a financial statement package, this is the holy grail. A balance sheet check that lands on zero. Every single time. Automatically. No more hours spent hunting for that one little rounding error. It just works. Look, this whole method, it's not just about building a slicker report. It's about fundamentally changing the way you work, giving you back your most valuable resource, time. So I'll just leave you with this one question to think about. Once your reporting is fully automated, what are you going to do with all that time you get back?